It's a bird. It's a plane. It's this is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. <laughs> Welcome to the Krypton Report, the All Things Kryptonian podcast, where we talk about anything relating to Superman, Supergirl, Krypton, DC Comics, and TV, movies, video games, comics. I am your host, Tyler, the Superman of Blue, the Man of Tomorrow. On today's episode, we're going to focus on Superman and Lois. Season 1, Episode 15, Last Sons of Krypton, the season finale. And who better to talk the season finale with than the man himself, the man of steel, the Superman of red, my brother in arms, Mr. James Cole. Welcome, James. Hey, Tyler. How's it going, man? Oh, pretty good. How's, how are you doing? Uh, you know, doing good, settling in. Uh, you know, every now and then there's that one thing that pops up in the house. You're like, oh, I'm going to take care of this. And kids started school. And... That was uh, it was weird. <laughs> that's that's been my whole hmm. whole week. Something it's been a long run. Like last night first. Faces, things, screaming. Are you? You're like this. This is peace, and then you're like, ah. and then you sit back like, okay, when's it gonna turn? When the bomb about to drop. Mm-hmm. You're like, just sucking all the joy right now. Yeah. Uh, and I chopped wood last weekend. Um, it's ridiculous. It's a hard day for it. Like, we didn't even work hard because it's too hot to work hard. But, you know, chop it's just hard work. So, um, it's a great, like, it's a great, like, workout. Like, I love chopping wood just because it's like, it's a hard job kind of thing, but like, I don't know. It relieves stress. feels good. Yeah. I probably you, sweat now. I makes you feel like a man. Yeah. Well, I don't know what we're going to have. We've got marks all down. Still. See, See yeah. G- what people don't know is James chopping wood is like that scene in Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter when he when he finally hits the tree and just you know in one swing of his axe cuts the tree in half. That's James chopping wood. Like like uh, <laughs> uh, Tom Welling pounding wood with his fist. Fire not too. <laughs> To, to be able to do that. But, I mean, it's crazy because, like, we've both been really busy. We're trying not to get behind on things, but we just have a lot of content, you know, that's being created and it's coming up, like, from the comics and the shows. Like, Supergirl came back, and it's just like, man, we have a lot going on. It's good, but it just gives us stuff to talk about. Sure. Um, I, I haven't even watched Supergirl. I haven't watched Titans yet, the new the new episode, because Janine and I always watch it together, and she's just been working late, and uh, you know we, the kids can't watch it. So yeah, yeah, I um, also I've been catching game up on Titan, so she so see three. So I'm watching about as I am, and uh, together. She's hopefully hopefully by Thursday. Yeah, it's not it's not bad when you go back for a rewatch. No, actually through a through a rewatch, just put it out there. Um, the season two finale wasn't as wasn't as horrible as. As I remembered it, uh, like like Donna's death. It's just the it's Earlier. the editing. <laughs> it's it's the yeah for almost a two year old episode. Like yeah, um, if you're listening she, to this like, podcast, you I know that was see. 
Yeah, I know that was like a a big tension stuff, but like as you're watching it, like she's the one who saw and she's the one who responded. Nobody else was like staring at the thing falling down. She's the only one who didn't. You know what I mean? She's yeah. the one who saw. She's the one who responded, and in turn, she got the answer. It wasn't as bad as the team. Everybody was talking. About. Which was the biggest point of mm-hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. So if you haven't seen it again, watch it again. It wasn't as bad. Not as spectacular. Yeah. As we all I think I think we're just taking her, you know, the way they cut off season one. Two little bit. Man, just so bad. So let's say there's not a whole lot of news, but just a couple little tidbits to get going here. Uh, the first one, the Injustice movie will be on Blu-ray and I think digital the same day. I'm not sure. I just saw the Blu-ray release date is October 12th. So October should be a big month for for DC, yeah, well, for DC period, I mean, that's coming out four days. And yeah, we have fandom, we have uh, the Smallville box set, Superman Lois, the first season on Blu-ray, which I'm going to buy because I got to have my physical. Yep. Um, <laughs> and the Superman the, animated series on Blu-ray. Yep. And Justice. And, yep. Yeah. October is going to be a banner month. For... Hopefully, we get some pretty badass content from Bando. You know, I'm wondering if that's where we'll see our first trailer for uh, Black Adam and the Flash. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, I'm. Well, they they've been they've been careful with the uh, Black Adam to not show not show his suit. Which they've said is going to be different than all of the other super suits that ever made. Yeah, the only form fitting ones are. But. It's going to um, be just. It's, it's just going to be just the rock underneath the suit. <laughs> it's going to be either two things actual just spandex or body paint. <laughs> right. <laughs> either one could work, I'm sure. My my favorite quote is they were showing like the rock where he's worked out and everything for Black Adam. <laughs> the thing was this guy coming. Like, is it time? Can we? Can we? Is it time to retire his name as the Rock and now he's the Boulder? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, you know he's he's like um, he, he's like a lot of um, physical people uh, trained for their roles. Like uh, Vin Diesel, he tries to bring a certain certain physique to a role. Um, and, and so his physiques are actually different for each role. Yeah. Um, but then, uh, uh, the same thing can be said, rock first came in, he just had his wrestling. And then as on did more like athlete roles. So mm-hmm. like he lost a lot of weight, got really thin. He was just thin shredded, you know, Mm-hmm. Um, he's always musky. He's got real thin shredded berry or whatever. Mm-hmm. He looks more athletic. But since then, you know, he's just, he's just getting jacked the whole time. And, uh, yeah, to, to play back Black Adam, he's been, got shredded and stupid. Well, it's kind of like when Hugh Jackman talked about when he did, he trained everything for the Wolverine, and then he pretty much shot the Wolverine in X Men: Days of Future Past back to back. And he just kept the routine and kept intensifying that he got even more in shape for Days of Future Past because he just kept the routine up. And it's like, yeah, pretty much. He he, he did a routine to like gain muscle to get big, like boxer for a movie after the Wolverine, and then went right into Days of Future Past and got shredded again. So mm-hmm. like he was ripped in, in the green and got huge for days of that. 
I swear, if I got that ripped, I'd be like, look, I don't care. Every scene, I'm just going to be half naked. <laughs> I'd be like, but this, you're, you're in the office building. Something gets spilled on my shirt. Uh, it comes off. It's, it's 10 degrees outside. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. So, but yeah, they, they kept a really good wrap on the, on the costume. So I'm hoping that, that yeah, by fan don't get like a trailer and my costume feel that would, you know, they've gotten a ton done for the flash. The Batman's been wrapped a long time. Yeah. I, I figure we'll get our second trailer for the Batman then. I just uh, saw that Asher Angel and uh, Zachary Levi um, are wrapped on shit. Yep. And David Sandberg posted today, actually shortly before we start recording, that he was filming a couple of actors and stuff, and they're pretty much almost done and wrapped for Shazam, which is crazy because that movie doesn't come until 2023. So it's just like, dang. And I, I hoped, you know, I told Janine this, is I hope that they almost immediately start making Shazam 3. Right. Like, just because of the, the rate the kids grow, and then with just everything that's been going on, like, it would make sense to me to just go straight into production on Shazam 3 with Black Adam. Yeah. They didn't because like, they didn't stop growing because everybody took a year and a half. I mean, it's the miracle of puberty. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, oh, I, I know. It's My just like look at, you know, did, did that. you know, it's like you know, you the I think looking at the kids for the Harry Potter films, like, yes, they were growing, but if you change out actors, you kill it. But because you know the the way the Harry Potter's movies work it's about coming of age and growing up you're you're literally watching those kids grow up through the you know yeah um, it's the same kind of concept as like when you have kid actors or whatever like you'll want to kind of get as much as you can as fast as you can so to me it would just make sense to just go ahead and like all right do shazam 3 because after that like all you really need is you get those three movies if you want to do more is zachary levi and Maybe Asher, you know, uh, depending on how you frame more Shazam or whatever. But yeah, so that's that's cool. Um, the next thing is we're getting a Black Canary, I guess HBO Max movie. I thought it was a show at first, but I guess it's the HBO Max movie with Journey Smollett. So that's exciting um, because I did like her Black Canary. We didn't get enough to, to really you know, in Birds of Prey to go into it, but I did like her Black Canary. Yeah, she was a, she was a standout. Everybody, everybody kind of stole the show every time they, they spoke, just pulled it back and forth. You know, Margo, Journeys. Mary Lynn said, yeah, when she got there and finally just, got to be Huntress and like, it's not a, <laughs> cr- it's not a bow and arrow. <laughs> like, and that's, I think that's the part, that's what was missing from that movie was their dynamic. Cause once you get there in the third act, you're like, man, I like this. Um, the movie is such an interesting study of character, of design. And it's weird. Like if you go in with no expectations, there, you, there's stuff you can find that you like in there. So. Oh yeah. I think it's a great movie. There are some things that it just kind of, it, it, seems like it pulls out of the comic world mm-hmm. and kind of just kind of doesn't. You know what I mean? So I was trying to be almost too real. Um, mm-hmm. I guess it's probably but other than that I the characters they the way that they tell the story a little bit of the back really it is really fun it is really good I like so that's coming from the people the writer and stuff who was on Lovecraft Country I look forward to that Uh, I think this would be you know this would be the best place if you wanted to to introduce Oliver Queen to have a Green Arrow because I love the character of Green Arrow and I feel like we've yet to got a really like definitive Green Arrow where you're like, that's it. 
I feel like if you mix Justin Hartley and you make, and you mix Stephen Amell, you you get more of like Oliver Queen, the character. Because you could finally introduce Oliver Queen without him trying to be Batman. So it, it would yeah. be cool. And, you know, just go ahead and put him in Seattle and have him do Sherwood Florist. It's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's coming. That's awesome. I'm, you know, some people are like, you know, why is it on HBO Max? I'm just like, I'm not even going to give it into that. <laughs> like, it's just. Well, I, it's just simple. If you think about it, I mean, they're, they're saying HBO Max is going to all the time. Like, they've already, they've already put out how many movies are coming out in the next three years. Right. Um, and the, the, the they can't. Nice. Yeah, they can't, they can't over, they can't flood the cinematic universe, especially not the cinematic universe. They can't flood the cinema with their movies because other people are coming too. And there's Any actually a strategy to how to do it, but this gives them another outlet to put out more content. Right, and it's Warner Brothers doesn't want and to compete only, with themselves. Yeah, because, and it's the only place you can see it. Right, they want people to go to HBO Max. And like That's why they created this. So just giving us more DC content and making HBO Max the home of DC is smart. Oh, for sure. Just Absolutely. like Superman and Lois is available on DC Max, or DC Max, huh? HBO Max. <laughs> that's what it should be called. DC. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> um. You can and still then, keep all that stuff on there, friend. Big Bang, and you know, go down the list of Lovecraft Country. Which I do. It's good. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I always, ha- I always have a problem with racism, just period, because the, it's just that um, I hate it. Like I hate racism. I, I do. I won't like you know. I was raised young in environments where there was multiculturals and stuff, and you just you know, kids just grew up. We just liked each other. You know, we didn't hate, and then. Uh, it's weird because it's amazing how kids can just grow and enjoy each other for the differences and not think of hate and how much hate is later taught. But I'm not going to go down that path right now. But So it's a little hard sometimes for me to watch shows that are, deal with racism, even when they're really good shows. Um, but, yeah, my side tangent. Um, so the Flash <laughs> I, I mean, I'm glad there are ones that – glad there are take it seriously, you know? Um, yeah. It's something that should never be forgotten, like, because it happened and it exists, but it definitely needs to uh, go away. <laughs> yeah. So, cast the announcement for season eight of The Flash, Tony Curran is being cast as Despero uh, in season eight of The Flash. Now, this actor... Um, is no new person to genre acting, okay? Um, I'm pulling up his IMDb because I want to read all the uh, stuff that he's done because I'll tell you what I know him best from. So he's going to be Despero. He was in Ray Donovan. He did voice work for Voltron. He was Finn in Daredevil the series. He was Gaines in three episodes of Sons of Anarchy. That's where they went to Ireland. He was... That's where I know him from. Yeah, where I know him from, and I'm just going through here, he's got an impressive resume. Um, he's done a lot of... He's been in big stuff where he's a small person in the back. Like Doctor Who, um, X-Men First Class. Going through, going through, going through. Come on, come on, come on. But where I know him most from is Underworld. He played Marcus in Underworld Evolution. And he was Priest in Blade 2. That's where I know him from. Ah, yep. Exactly who you're talking about. And I think he was Skinner in uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, even though Skinner mostly is, uh, you know, not visible. Yes. So. Yeah, I'm about, to, ago. I'm about to watch that with the kids. I think Solomon would dig it just because of things. So, yeah, so that's exciting. And then they announced who the people for the guest spots are for the Flash 
kind of like crossover Armageddon arc. And Flash will kick off November 16th, which I think is like the week after Supergirl ends. That's um, true. And that, 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 that model is yeah. First season. <laughs> so we're going to have, of course, Javicia Leslie's Batwoman, which that'll be interesting because she's never interacted with anybody. Brandon Ralph as the Adam is coming back. That's cool. Kate Magnamara's Mia Queen. That's cool because I feel like that's kind of giving closure to her character since they didn't get the spinoff. And I guess they could just have her now as operating as the Green Arrow in the background in the universe or whatever. Uh, Osric Chow back as Ryan Choi. So maybe there'll be a baton toss or baton, <laughs> uh, baton pass of the Atom to the, from Ray to Ryan Choi. Tyler Lee's Sentinel. No, oh, you're fine. <laughs> Kyler Lee's Sentinel from Supergirl. And then last but not least, the one that I really wanted was Cress Williams as Black Lightning. Because I really liked the couple of scenes they got together in Crisis. Um, that's cool. I like it. A um, little disappointed just because you were not getting... Anyone from, like, we're not getting Superman and the Flash together. Um, so that's kind of disappointing that we're not getting to see them operate together. Well, hopefully, hopefully they'll, uh, <clears throat> hopefully they'll bring uh, them together later on in the season, see what happens there. I was, because if he doesn't show up there. I was also hoping that we would get, um, Stargirl. Because, you know, the, they discover the new multiverse and Stargirl shows up and meets the Flash. So, right. Yeah, just I was hoping of, for the passing on Adam. Adam uh, which I think is... After Crisis. You know, Brandon yeah. Ralph announced this show and they brought in the guy Choi and stuff. And I think this could be the chance we could get with the Adam being the Adam. Because I miss, that's the thing about Legends. Like, I'm behind on watching it because I just get burned out. Because a lot of times it's just kind of crazy, zany, and it's so removed from the characters that they are. And by now, like, it's all almost characters that weren't really comic book characters or whatever. Um, all just made up for the show characters. As I miss him. Ray Palmer being the Adam in the suit, being the Adam and not just kind of a goofy guy. So it'll be cool. I'm excited just because it'll be a neat little way of doing the Flash crossover and not doing a crossover at the same time. Kind of like this year was just Diggle cameos um, for the crossover. But All right. I think that takes care of news type stuff. I think... I think that's it. Sounds about right. Yep, I kind of dropped in. Just saw. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. Here we go. We're going to be right back with Superman and Lois here on the Krypton Report. Hello, everybody. I just want to let you know that Southgate Media Group has its own Patreon. That's right. For $5 a month, you can get exclusive shows, content, and interviews with the different podcasters of the network. This Week in Geek is a Patreon-exclusive only series. So check it out. Go www.patreon.com slash Southgate Media Group. We are always adding new content. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. And we're back. Okay. Season finale. One thing, we made predictions last time we were talking. And my biggest prediction that I thought would happen did not happen. <laughs> Which one was that? Just about Clark having his mother's crystal and using his mother's crystal to kind of help mentally fight Tao Ro and letting Tao kind of overcome the Eradicator, like a kind of like a Anakin Skywalker defeating Vader type thing, you know, where it's like him battling inside himself kind of thing. Right. And... um. So, yeah, that was my biggest kind of like, oh, I think this is going to happen, but it didn't happen. And 
other than that, I I like the season finale. It's good. And I've, you know, I heard some people chattering about it online because you can't really avoid this stuff when you're us. That the problem with this show, and not that it's a bad problem, is that so many episodes in on cliffhangers that for other shows would be their season finale. That when we got here, it was kind of like, okay, so what's next week's episode? Oh, right, this is the season finale. Oh, okay. You know, right. it's kind of like you had to take a moment to realize, like, oh, wow, this this was it. Um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just point of interest, you know. Yeah. Um. I. Yeah, I like to see now. Um, you know, say going into it, I expected a. I don't know, uh, just a little more. Um, I thought I thought it was bigger. I guess action and stuff, but um, that did detract because what I expect uh, doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so that, that did detract from the episode at all. I thought it was, I thought it was really good. I action it was, it was awesome. Only one thing I had a little bit of trouble with fire of die that kid speaks is nowhere near the cadence that that guy speaks, so it's a little off. So I, I thought about that. I thought about that. And here's what, well, that, here's guy's, what I, that guy's got a unique cadence to his voice. Here's what I'm thinking, okay, is that, that Jordan spoke the lines, and then in post they decided, you know what, maybe it's too much of an emotional punch that we can't take, that we didn't really write with, with these words coming from Jordan to Clark, that it's going to be a lot easier if we just make it Tao Rose voice. Right. Because nobody else had someone else's voice when they were eradicated. I mean, they were modulated and whatnot. Right. So I'm wondering if they just decided as, an, as a choice, like, okay, let's just put his voice in there just to help show when he's in control, to help... You know, just whatever. And to make it so that it's not really Jordan saying these words to Clark because we yeah. don't have enough time to explore what that should be. Yeah. But, you know, I, I saw it. I noticed it. But I didn't let it uh, take me out of it, you know. Um, pretty good. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, uh. Yeah, it was a it was a really good, really good episode, and like it being a season finale, it had like return of king, return of the king, number of finales. I was about to say that. I like this is like Peter Jackson directed the ending. <laughs> yeah, and here's one the after end. another. Now and let's do this. Well, the, and the other thing is they're still doing extended episodes, I guess. And I didn't watch it live. We tried to, but we just. We uh, we kind of do it as like Wednesday mornings, you know, was our thing. We'd get up and have breakfast as a family early and watch it while we ate breakfast. And it was a cool kind of like tradition thing, you know. So the kids enjoy it and trying to watch it live sometimes with trying to keep their schedule is too difficult. So that's that's just kind of how we we rolled with it. Um, same thing now with Star Girl. We were trying to watch live because the, the kids enjoy Star Girl and. As everybody should, because it's really a good show and it's a good family show. Um, yeah, we're a couple episodes behind. Watch the first. Yeah, not watched. And so, you know, I, I don't know what was in the broadcast compared to the extended, and I don't care. I like it. You give me more, it's all good. Oh, sure. Um, I understand the idea of that show. Mm-hmm. Give our character more action, more action. I want to see full immersive world. I don't want something that just press by and done. And if I liked it, I'll go back. Right. So I want a world to like. That's why. That's why I'm. 
breakfast cups. Like that. Have 5, 10, 15, 30, two hours extra to it. Um. <laughs> 30 minutes, two hours extra. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because if you're engaged, I mean, it's just like I can pop in the Lord of the Rings and get lost in it and watch it and not realize about three hours has gone by. Yeah. And, and, and the extended and it's, cuts. And it's all work. talking. You know what I mean? It's all there. Action. Furthering a lot of the story. You know? Like, making you believe that this, this character has a life. That it's not just this. Exactly. Um, okay, so we're kind of just going to pop around on this episode. Because there's all kinds of stuff just running through my brain. I want to make sure I hit on. So one thing, because I have it playing in the background while we're talking, is so Talro, you know, destroyed the, the sun, Sunstone, Sun Crystal of Jarrell, and they have a pseudo funeral type thing where they bury the crystal at the camp farm, and Clark puts it in the ground, and he's talking about you know his father Jarrell, his homeworld, and Jania looks at me and goes, "Crystals are known to when they're put in the ground to." heal and grow together and repair themselves so let's see so I'm like okay alright you know before I could even say it like she's like I wonder if it'll like fix itself but it'll be like Kryptonian tech mixed with earth because it'll have you know particles of earth grown into it so that's cool uh, one thing Sam Lane real quick you know he I wondered last episode if he got injured and was going to die kind of how we have this theme of like the death of the parental figures through this season, you know? The parental figures of Clark and Lois being that Clark lost Jarrell, Clark lost his mom, and then Sam was like the last parental figure he had. Um, But nope, Sam's good. He's stepping down from the DEO, so that'll be interesting. Looks like potentially John Henry might take over uh, in the DEO or something, you know? Uh, DOD, yeah, dang it. (laughs) Too many letters. Um, so, yeah, let's, uh, those are some quick thought points. I mean, the episode moves quickly. I mean, it's, it's 40 some minutes and it starts strong because it picks up right where we kind of left off from last time. We have Lois confronting Leslie and Leslie ended up in jail. So, I mean, she's still out there, you know what I'm saying? Like. She's still out there. Like, they didn't, like, wrap up her storyline. She's not in prison. I don't know why she's not in the Phantom Zone, because that would be the best place to put her. But that's still my working theory that um, this takes place after the last season of Supergirl. Um, We get some cool shots of Clark going around the world looking for Jordan, yelling in his, his son's voice for his son. Which, you know, as a parent... Makes is, me wonder if they wrote the, um, <clears throat> wrote the sound of this place after May this year. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, it was just a thought. I was like, hey, I wonder if they wrote that after this. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, yeah, Leslie's still there. She's alive in prison. I mean, Tal Rowe is still there. She's alive I thought he should have. I thought he was that yeah. um, he and they, gave himself up to eradicate it, and that was it. He eradicated, shut it down. Yeah. So, so I, I guess I guess him. the little bit of I guess the little bit of him, um, him chatting Kal El after it was all over after that hit that massive hammer smash. <laughs> Yeah, John um, improved his hammer with, like, some red solar power in it. Yeah. Yeah, so that was really cool. I thought after that smash, like, yeah. I guess the, uh, so I guess the, the smallest discipline part of that was that he reverted back to being Tal Ro. And I thought he was supposed to be erratic. Yep. So that's interesting. Of just cause, And I feel like we didn't really get a chance to deal with him afterwards. Once he became the Eradicator, he just basically became a figurehead. Um, he, yeah. he shows up in Smallville. I don't think he did a little... 
Right. Um, he showed up in Smallville, and I like how you know he pulls out the ex kryptonite and he chooses who to bring to light, and he brings back like the the council from Krypton. Yeah, the defense soldiers. council. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, Okay, so Jordan, I like the fight between Jordan and Superman. So it's basically Zeta Row and Superman fighting. Uh, there's one thing I think could have been a little bit longer and more developed in this episode. It would be that. Um, I do like, you know, that it's basically Lois who's like, I've helped Jordan fight and come back from the dark so much before. Um. I can do this. And they basically yeah. are able to get the consciousness of Lois inside Jordan's head. And I like that, you know, it kind of went back through things and his mom came for him. And I'm hoping, okay, that just because pseudoscience that Jordan is half Kryptonian and he was possessed by, you know, Zeta, that maybe he's going to retain more. It helped unlock more Kryptonian powers inside him. So, like, Jordan, maybe next season he'll start flying. He'll start actually having more super powers than what he's seen, and he'll be able to use them. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, the so a couple of things, the, the fight there, uh, I really like the fight. Um, show, like, the speech that it you was know, talking about how he was tortured, and he said he gave up his own son or uh, Krypton strike so to hurt his body so, and protect himself as well oh yeah from, it's, it's a psychological it's a psychological attack yeah oh, absolutely yeah it was the smartest play because then you know one Jordan's body's stronger two you know it, it already brings his Superman's defenses down so yeah Zayden knew what he was doing. Douchebag. Yeah, yeah. So it was that was pretty cool. Um, and then the, the the mind thing, like the one thing that got me was when Zeta woke up. They had to build the tension in the world while Lois was inside his head. So you know he got up, he awoke, choking or or just trying to heal. Uh, he choked Jonathan. Jonathan trying to kill them, and Lois is still in his head. He's not wearing ice. Woke up. Mm-hmm. Oh. So he just did that. But I did like how she talked, trying to get her son to take back. That was a real scene. Near the, near the opening of the pilot episode. Oh, we, we didn't uh, mention it. Where he's um, crying and having panic attacks and stuff. You know, we didn't mention that uh, that was directed by Tom Cavanaugh. And I think he did a great job directing this episode. Yes, he did. One thing I liked in this episode was really showing John Henry's power fluctuation in his suit. We kept seeing it. Um, you know, we have the scene where he flies out into space. And, um, you know, we have Tao, Morgan Edge, whatever you want to call him, in the Schuster Mines, basically eradicating the energy where he's just creating a giant bubble to spread his energy. And eradicate masses all at once. Yeah, I, th- I thought it was. I thought it was supposed. To, they didn't really make it clear, but at like point, like blow up the mind and all of their still all at mm. time. Yep, it's like the the big light. I love the scenes between Clark and John Henry. Like they're really getting that good vibe of buddies together. Um, I really feel like the stakes were good for John Henry in this one with him fighting the Kryptonians and his suit having issues and getting weaker. I like when they fight in the Schuster mines. 
aka the same site that they probably filmed the battle for the world in crisis <laughs> <laughs> right I like when superman fights other kryptonians i like that kyle cushing got his really kind of good hero moment when you know he runs into the building and saves that lady in smallville and he comes walking out so he made it um yeah i'm glad he got a hero and he wasn't killed off to, to try and way he was early in the season. Right. I feel like he's, he's, he wasn't bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was a person. And he, I think that they've done a great job with his character of not being two-dimensional, not being stereotypical. Like, he's a person struggling with stuff. And he's, you know, he's admitted he was wrong when he, to Lois when he dealt with her. And, you know, that he's admitted that he was trying to save the town. He made mistakes, but he was trying to do the best interest to help the people of his town. It's not like he was evil, you know? Yeah, um, not at all. Not at all. He just, he, he was going through a lot to see the town. And it just kept going, kept pushing. And of other towns. Of course, the Cushings aren't going to leave Smallville. They're not, um, you know, we got the great scene of just, you know, them, Lana, like basically calling the people of Smallville into, um, you know, listening to the, when Sam Lane's talking and stuff. So I'm, I'm thinking for next season, man, like I really think Lana should become, be the mayor of Smallville. I think that would be a great like arc for her, her family, you know, like Clark talks about Lana kind of being the heart of Smallville, the successor to Martha. Um, yeah, I definitely see her. I definitely see her trying to play a big film like that. The way that Mayor was too based to talk about them behind the back. Exactly. I can see them pushing taking over that position. Did you think for a minute they might actually have John Henry die? Mm, I was wondering if he was going to be saved. I was like, how is he going to be saved? Superman was holding on to the Eradicator and the hammer with the red soul and came crashing. Explosion. Mm-hmm. Um, so how is he saved? So I thought uh, he's going to die, but I didn't expect Superman to save him. should be powered. Yeah, that's and that's kind of where I was because I was thinking he, but you know. So the episode is 45 minutes, and at 30 minutes of the episode is when. Tau is officially taken and we're starting in the multi endings <laughs> of them cleaning up Smallville. Um, so yeah, that's where we are. Which was a nice voiceover um, uh, with Clark, uh, with Superman telling what, what happened. He does a good job. Just yes. And help. Mm-hmm. But still trying to be truthful and tell truthful, people. Truthful, honest, be and and earn that. And that's, I mean, that's the best thing he can do. And he's, you know, he's given this report and everything to Chrissy. And um, it's just interesting. And then we get, you know, the good Cushing barbecue for the town. Kyle, the grill master. And, okay, so Chrissy had like a a big conglomerate that wanted to buy the paper. And somehow it works out that Lana has enough. They sold their, or not Lana, dang it, Tyler. Uh, Lois, Lois sold Clark's their thing. loft. 
Yeah, they're Metropolis. Yep. They're and they have money that they're going to be partners in on the paper. And you know, I'm just thinking like, I, so I don't talk about it much, but I did work for my town's newspaper as a reporter for a little while. It was a very bad experience because the people that worked there were horrible. So I don't I don't talk about it much. Um, but one thing I did learn is a lot of small town papers they're owned by just like one giant company, one giant publishing. Um, and so, you know, the idea that Smallville is still independently owned is an interesting little tidbit. So, right. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Lois wants that. Like she just wants to, she wants to print the stories that she always printed, you know, mm-hmm. that she always, whether it's, um, uh, you know, good for it, it, it. Stories aren't going to be crushed by by people to, to, because mm-hmm. they own. It. And I guess you know, with Lois Lane at the Smallville paper, my thing is <clears throat> they could maybe branch out and like get some online subscriptions, and people wanted to hear reporting and. But they don't have the resources. For, to me, like, it's just interesting because small town news is it, so small, you know, and little. And if you've lived in a small town and you've worked on it, you'd understand, like, how, like, what's really news and what's just not, like, puff or advertising. <laughs> uh, and, like, not having the resources for her to do a lot of her investigating like she used to do is going to be a big change for, like, she can't hop on a plane and go to D.C. or do this, you know. Well, you know, yeah. it's like Harry, like, don't have money for a bicycle shop. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they still, but they still afford it. Yeah. <laughs> he just has to say his piece. Mm-hmm. So it's just one of those things like, what, what is Lois going to be doing up at the paper, you know? Because I don't, like, I don't, season two is like, I'm curious about what they're going to do because I'm just like, um, you, I feel like you can't make Smallville this little town constantly being attacked. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. Because then it's going to get like, why do we live here? Why is this town not safe? What happened in life? Yeah. Why Why is this um, town not safe? You know, 10 years of alien invasion or showers and you, you're freaks. Like, it doesn't draw attention. I do think so. We do have Tegan, you know, and John make up and whatever. So that's a thread for the next season. Um, and maybe her, her, uh, what do you call it? Her, uh, criminal father will be, her, will be in yeah. the flash or something. Either in the flash or he'll come to town to see her or something. So that could be a story for an episode or two. Mm-hmm. Um, we have John Henry, you know, he's, he's leaving because of just, you know, He's made peace with Superman, but it's hard for him to be around Lois. And I get it. It's cool. Um, but then, Well, yeah, uh, I mean, like he says, even though you're not her, see. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's difficult. <laughs> so let's, let's, uh, let's skip to the end. What did you think about the very end? The little kind of stinger tease for... The stinger? Yeah. Um... Well, I'm glad that I'm glad that um, Nat is is alive. Mm-hmm. That she found her dad. Um, it was kind of cool to see her show up. She was the one who built the suit, mostly, anyways. So uh, it's really cool that she was able to have some kind of ship to get to get there. However, she did. She found no next season. Maybe well, I get more insight into into how John traveled through all the first or what, one on Earth another. What I what I what I figured was is you know John traveled through a wormhole, and basically I figured it was one of those that he was up there fighting Superman, and Tasha was already like in a ship or something she built to go up there with him. So he hit the wormhole, and she was maybe just a minute or two behind him. But due to time dilation theory, right. you know, her Whatever. arriving 
Yeah, just like, you know, you hit a, a wormhole, she, he lands, and then she lands a minute behind him, but because of the travel and space and science and physics, it's actually, you know, months later. Right, right. And she was yeah. locked on to him, so that's why the uh, – um, and I, I think it's cool. I think it's it's great because it, it really helps lift the burden that he carries um, for his world, for his family, for his daughter. It makes him not alone. I could have done without the whole line of her seeing Lois and saying mom. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know that's going to be a thing. That's going to be part of Lois seeing her daughter. That she could have had. Like, but see, I hate that. I it's hate not, that. I, it's I not because, the same because it's not the same because it's hers and Clark's. It's not John. It, yeah, um, it's a daughter with is, the same name. It is a daughter with the same name. That's still going to be hard for her, I'm sure. Um, she was still dealing with the loss of the baby this season. Um, right. And I, I, that's a thread that Jeannie and I appreciate just bringing light because so many people overlook those type so of things. That's, yeah, that's going to be something for her. We're going to see something similar with that way with John see. Her mom, but it's not it, Lois. It's not Lois. Um, yeah. So something similar there. Different feelings, less romantic and more um, loving and loving, caring. So it'll be nice to see that. Uh, you know, we got um, Nat as as a, a steel character in the comics as well. So there's. Have yeah, I mean, or it could be something where she becomes basically she becomes steel, and John's kind of more of just the man in the chair type thing or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the the show is a great show. It it, it definitely helps when you are able to watch the show straight with all these breaks compared to any other CW show. I think the breaks hurt this show. Um, cause there's a lot of hype, a lot of momentum. And then those breaks really slow that down. And especially towards the end where they had like two episodes, then go on a hiatus and two episodes, you know, um, this show really would benefit from just being able to sit down and like once a week on the CW, watch that straight. Yeah. Well, because. I'm definitely looking forward to binging out. So for, watch, watch the story bill. I agree. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I I really love this show. It is a very well done Superman show that I don't have complaints for. You know, uh, I'm enjoying what they're giving me. I look forward to it, and it's definitely the Superman that we need. Yeah, and I can't wait there to be, begin filming season two. September, Next, right? Yeah, September. Yeah, September. Yeah. All right, we're going to wrap that up. But one thing we forgot earlier is they are bringing for season three of Stargirl. Like we knew that we were getting season three. And I think we, we talked about this or we read it or something that they mentioned moving production to Vancouver, like all the other shows for season three. Um, I think, or I'm just, I don't know. There's been so much. But anyways. That would change the look. Right. Not that where they really build Or, or you know, they need to write it into the story that the JSA leaves. Or, and that's why I thought that maybe she would meet the Flash or whatever, and they would come over to our Earth for something, or they go to another city for something. You know, like there's reasons in the show why there's a change. Right. Um, but we'll see. I can't remember if that's true or not. I could be just telling tales out of school here. But Sportsmaster and Tigers from Caesar Regulars for Stargirl Season 3. Which is cool. They have their daughter, Artemis Croc, which, you know, you and I are talking about would be cool if we do have some way of Jade to have Cheshire. And, you know, we get some drama from, we have family drama from them, you know, like Jade comes back and Jade is basically the daughter that they really want. And Artemis starts to have her turn for good or whatever, you know. Yeah, um, or Cheshire is... Cheshire is bad, and, and Artemis doesn't follow that. Like we saw in 
beginning, like beginning of season two, she she and parents saying it was crap. They were this and it was something at this time or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I think when she learns that her parents are actual criminals and killers and stuff, that she will um, kind of step away from. Them. You and it, know, would, be, and it, it would, would help if they did have Cheshire as a push. Like, Cheshire's bad. They are. Maybe Jay comes back this season or next season, whatever, to take care of her, to help her sister. I, I just think it'd be interesting to have these two family dramas going on. You know, the one family that's the good working together, two siblings, and the other one that's the corrupt. And you have that built-in dynamic of you can have, you know, Artemis as out of place and wishing she was part of a different family. Um, so the, it'll be cool. I mean, I, I love, I really enjoy star girl. Like I really enjoy that show a lot. Um, it was definitely a highlight of the DC TV shows. It still remains on the outs from the corruption of the CW. So we just, we keep our fingers crossed. Hey. Um, <laughs> if you're like me and you love listening to different podcasts about Superman, I have a few that I want you to check out. Some of my favorites are The Last Sons of Krypton. Connor and Ray are always reviewing different books, and it's really nice and refreshing to kind of dig back into older stuff. The aspiring Kryptonian, Tasman and her team are always finding interesting people to interview. Digging for Kryptonite is one of my favorite ones to listen to, as Anthony digs into different eras of the character. There's always the Always Hold On to Smallville, which I've guested on before, if you're wanting to step back into that nostalgia realm. So check out all these, and there are many, many more. So check out our Twitter, because we're constantly finding new podcasts that inspire and bring hope to everyone. So now we're going to jump into a little bit of comics here. And this week we got Superman 78, number one. What do you think? Let me grab my book real quick. It's right here next to me. Um, you know, reading it, it it felt a lot like uh, Superman. Said, felt a lot. Um, you know, reading it, it felt like Chris Reed's, uh Chris Reed, Clark, Superman, uh, Margot Kidder, uh, Harry White. They all felt like they were. Hold the screen, put on the page. Just hope as we continue forward, you know, it's a terrible person. <laughs> yeah, and that's, the, that's the problem. Like, you know what? People always talk about Margot Kidder's Lois. When you go back, she was a horrible person to Clark. Um, you know, we, we get that awesome page with Richard Donner at the beginning, like a, a goodbye to Richard Donner, talking about he made it believe that a man could fly. Um, we have a, you know, a thing about, we have Jarrell and Lyra as the planet blows up. It almost looks as though, um, it almost looks as though Jarrell and Lyra are bottled by Brainiac. Thank you. That's what we I was see, thinking. We see a dome at the beginning. Not, not right. You know, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe they were on the outskirts of it. Craft inside, hard to tell, but it looks like they are bottled or they saw the bottle happening. Yep. Um, but definitely Brainiac in this, which is really in the opening of this here. This, this first issue looks like um, the beginning of Superman Unbound. Brainiac Throne comes to Earth and you know, signals back to yeah, but that what kicks off the story. You know, I do like the interaction, like right here at the beginning, of Clark and Lois, where Lois left her wallet. Clark pays for the hot dogs. Um, you know, like you said, it feels very much like that. And Perry busting on Clark Kent for his reporting skills that. He's just not bringing the news. Like he's not bringing the, the daily planet level news. It's, it's just, it's interesting when Clark suffers as a reporter for being Superman. Right. Um, well, you know, at this point, like, does he 
we're not Superman at all, or is Lois head over heels for her. I feel like um, it's in, in the context of 78, it's Lois is the only one that reports on Superman. Um, so. Yeah. My favorite, my favorite page in the book is like the shirt rip and then him starting to fly. I mean, the, and then we have, you know, people panic in the streets from the robot. And he shows up and he's fighting. Um, there's, I mean, there's some great lines that feel very 78, like, um, where is it? Where he like says, does anyone need medical attention? I'm not sure officer. I'll get to the bottom of it as soon as I make it sure everyone is all right. Um, I'm not sure if like he would, I, I like it, but I'm not sure if he would do this where he tells the robot, Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Superman. I'm yeah, like, that seems a little does seem a little bit far, but you know that's that's people's nostalgic. Reed right. was always the smiling, like he was the boy. I like how I'm, and and I mean it, it's it's through nostalgic glasses. If you rewatch it, it's not as as it's not as over the top. You know, as much as his Clark is over the top, the way his Superman is nice is not that. Right. So right. It, that's that's through a nostalgia lens that people are like, yeah, he's just he's just ultimate Boy Scout. I like how they miss coloring part of his trunks on the page where he gets thrown into the wall by the robot. It's kind of funny, as big of a deal as the trunks are for the Superman, <clears throat> especially this. Um, he's, you know, the, it reports back and Superman says, what's a Brainiac? And then we see Brainiac with his bottles talking about the report. There's a Kryptonian. The rogue Kryptonian must be collected by Brainiac. And he's speaking in the third person. So Brainiac is coming to earth. Um, all in all, I like it. What do you think of the look of this Brainiac? Like small ship looking. I think the Brainiac looks good. I mean, it's it's trying to like through a nineteen seventies lens of what they would do for a Brainiac or what their idea of the technology and stuff was. It would definitely feels true to like the Silver Age books and stuff at the time. Right. Well, when you look at Brainiac back then, you got what, like pink coat and green skin, red dot on his head. Yep. Just an art that he wore. Yeah, so I mean, this works quite well. Um, I think the likeness, you know, for the for the characters in this are good enough. It's always tricky when you're dealing with like likeness rights, especially you know we just had Batman '89 come out, and how the art looks like the actors, but not perfect. And I think it's more of a likeness rights issue. Like they can't have it be Michael Keaton. It has to be just enough so you see Michael Keaton. Yeah, I, I think that's what they did. I think they got artists who could do, like, a likeness, just give you shade of that likeness, but not, but not make it look like the actor. So and you like, can see it, but just, just because of those deep, those little details. And, you know, um, like you and I talked about before, um, Gary, Gary Frank's Superman in Secret Origins that he drew Looks a lot like Chris Reeve, Superman. Yeah, and yeah. So the Gary, the Gary Frank Superman looks a lot like Chris. So right, right there's another almost variation of that likeness issue. Um, so here's a here's a story. His, his Chris, his Chris always looks more like oh, upset in the in the um. Yes, like, like he's he's got the he's got the upset look down, and he's got the cheery look so when yep. he's like smiling and happy and when he looks angry those both look exact like Reeve and then in between like looks a lot like but not exactly <laughs> I agree um, so here's here's my question to you um, this is Superman 78 and what makes this Superman 78? And why I say that is, okay, Batman 89 is coming out. 
And it's there were two screenwriters that worked on the script for Batman 89, Sam Hamm and another gentleman whose name evades me right now, who passed away shortly after Batman 89. So Sam Hamm is writing the book, Batman 89, okay? Which feels like it's from an authentic, organic place. Because it's one of the creators who helped shape that film, continuing that story. But all your creative forces behind Superman 78 have no involvement in this story. You know, Chris Reeve is dead. Richard Donner has passed. Um, Tom Mankiewicz has passed. You know, those are the ones who really, you know, carved out the script. I mean, the script went through several writers, rewriters, but it was Tom Mankiewicz with Donner who really finished it and put the, the shooting version on the, on screen. So I feel like the forces that really, you know, even the Sulkines have no, uh, what do you call it? Ilya is still alive. Um, have no part in this story. So now it just becomes almost like a Superman 78, not fan fiction, but like, it's like Batman 66, nostalgia mm-hmm. telling stories that you didn't or couldn't see. Well, exactly. You know, I'm, I'm just throwing that out there because, you know, there are people who are still alive who could have contributed to the Batman 66 or the Wonder Woman 77, you know. Yeah. But there's but, nobody alive to really make Superman 78 cont- connected to the original. Um, so it's right. just a thought. That's all I'm where saying. They might have, yeah, where they might have seen it. Um, you know, like like in Batman 89, there's there's... Tim Burton Easter eggs all over, you know, just to show, yeah, Tim Burton's, <laughs> they're, they're stamping that right there. Um, so yeah, we'll see as it continues, you know, we're definitely read all six, I'm sure I'll buy all six issues and buy the trade when it comes out then. Um, and I think this would definitely be one that would benefit from a trade, but I want to read it, you know, uh, as it yeah. comes. And I had a I, poll. Okay. Go ahead. I hope they. Go ahead. Well, I hope they continue beyond six. I know it's a six issue story, but I hope it sell, sells well. Expand. You know, they did a number of back six, and I would like to see this part as possible. Like to see where the story goes and how much they adhere to like this 1978 world, Metropolis, the way they write the characters. I mean, for not for people not being live to have put on this, except that many times, they are doing a really good job of keeping the world. Donner. You know, and as much as people hate on the guy right now, and I'm, if this would have been written by Jeff Johns, I think I would be a little bit more interested just because Jeff Johns worked with Richard Donner. He knew Richard Donner. They actually did a comic together that we'll review one day. Um, so... That's, I feel like that'd be at least some like a step outside towards the source material, but close. But I want to run this by you, okay? I have this poll going right now on our Twitter. It has eight hours left of the poll, okay? And I really want to get more people pushed on this. Um, but the idea is how do you how should you buy comics? Should you buy them in trades, single monthly issues, like from your shop, a subscription slash direct from the publisher, or wait for DC Infinite? And the r- results right now are 17% saying trades, 33 saying single issues, 17 saying subscriptions, and 33 saying wait for DC Infinite. So I think that's it's a really kind of a split. Yeah, highly, because um, definitely into those. 
I'd like to You know, Janine, I got talking about this because I was looking at, you know, using subscription for the big books that I read that are ongoing, like Action and Superman. But we, it's Super Sailor Flash. Um, But we talked about how, you know, going to your comic books uh, shop is supporting small businesses, which Janine and I like to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So, (laughs) I mean, I'm, I'm, but yeah, I go buy my single issue. I love my trades. We're buying every single week. Buy my issues. Um, so, but I I want to keep up on uh, Superman. Um, Superman. Was buying some other books. Just trying to keep up. Mm-hmm. Mostly. So. I started buying a lot of books at Infinite Frontier that quickly. Yeah, and it, still, I'm still buying books. Probably you know, and Brian and I got talking about this because I said, you know, the, one of the biggest things is just, um, you know, like, like the whole big Batman thing has come to the fear state or whatever. I'm like, I want to read it, but that's when I'm going to wait for DC. Now, this is it's Sayla as the Flash. Go save the world, Sayla. Go save the world. Um, I want to read it, but I don't want to get hooked into buying all the books again, where I got to buy this one off, this one off, this one off. Kind of like, you know, The Endless Winter was a cool story, but it ended up being a lot more books than I thought it was going to be. And I'm like... I just kind of, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, ha, ha. Yeah. Um, see, books like that, like, it's tough when you make the decision. You know, I'm paying for this. So reading, uh, I'm reading lots of issues on that, old issues, and, uh, more than six months, you know? But there are a lot of issues that I was buying back at the beginning of Infinite Frontier that I'm going to have to up every because I got it on just, right. Wait, I remember my, my, I need to know what's going on and, and just wait for them to come out of the universe. And it's, it's tough. It is tough, it's but tough I feel to like they're figure out where you're spending. You I'm, I'm having more fun. I, I, so I told Brian, I was like, you know, since they did the DC universe infinite app, it doesn't automatically start where you're reading the comics panel by panel because I hate reading panel by panel. I like to just have like a page, like a PDF of the page and read. Yeah. And I just find that reading it on my tablet's a lot easier. So I have gotten into reading more digital comics because I am paying for it, you know? And as long as I read at least three to four comics on it a month, I feel like I'm getting my money's worth. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, oh, yeah. You pay for it. You pay um, for it. As long as you're reading three comics a month, you pay for it. So I just and they're and they're putting stuff on there faster. So like a lot of the future state that I didn't get to is on there. That I'm like, I don't like feel like I have I don't have the impulse as much to buy a certain like just back issues of everything or trades of everything like I did before. I'm like, and I'm just like, is that good for their business? <laughs> you know, like, um, I don't know. It's just that's why I'm like I'm, I'm interested in this poll. So well, it's kind of like the it's kind of like the idea of. Um, HBO Max. You know what I mean? Movies, the screeners, uh, how many people are watching? And then compare it to the box office. The suicide Squad. The suicide Squad box office is an extreme. But, um, you know, you see, you see the, the, them saying that it's like the most watched households in the first 17 days now. And big two set buys, each one, you know, four, four million households, uh, compare that to subscription costs, and what it ticket wise and stuff like that. They're making a ton of, they're making a killing. These, these coming out on streaming, the amount of, I don't have all the math in front of me. Other people have done it. I have mm-hmm. myself, um, but 
you know, they're making, they're making billions, hundreds of millions of dollars on subscription with these amount of people watching it. What they would be making in theaters, they're still making it in revenue over here on this end because they have more right. revenue streams now. And I think that's the same thing with DC Universe, even though they're not selling these issues. As long as people are paying for DC Universe, they're buying free issues a month. Every single person who's subscribed is buying free issues a month. But see, the one thing about like HBO Max is you aren't spending the money. Like you make this movie and you release it on HBO Max. You're not profit sharing your tickets with a theater. Even no. Though that's, and you're not, you don't have to pay for advertising like you did before. The marketing advertisement, the, the budget is lower because it's, you know, a lot of it's in-house advertising too. You know, it's, it's interesting because look at comic books themselves. I mean, you go and grab a comic off the 90s. There's ads for like Nintendo and Sega and other stuff inside of it. Now, all the ads inside comic books are for other things, other comics or like the shows <laughs> that are on of the DC shows or whatever. You know, like the Superman 70 you open at the front cover, I think, is... It's that Richard Donner, and then um, back cover is Superman and Lois. Page and before Star- that is Titans, and then the back back is Star Girl. Yeah, you know, and then it's advertisements for the Fear State. So, well, you know, you're seeing, you know, you're you're talking about ads right here. Like these ads are in the comics. You're seeing all this stuff, and they're direct to all your other stuff. It's the same thing with the DC Universe. They, mm-hmm. When Titans Season 3 came at, came on, like, boom, Titans Season 3 is out on HBO Max. Go watch it on Max and read all of our stories here that we recommend. Same thing with the, the Suicide Squad. Catch up on the Suicide Squad here. Go watch the Suicide Squad on HBO Max. Yep. And, and so that's just, it's nice, but all right. We're, we're kind of running a little long, but that's us, and I don't think there's any other comics for us to go over at the moment because your stuff's all still packed up. So we'll have to catch up on comics more yep, soon. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to do a, a nice nice. Um, so. But all right, James. Thanks for being here. Thanks for by listening to the Krypton Report. Take care, and we'll see you next time. Look up in the sky. Part of the Southgate Media Group Network of Podcasts. If you have an interest. Check out Southgate Media Group to see if your podcast is there. I bet it is. At the Southgate Media Group website, you can sign up for our newsletter. You'll get info on all the shows, and you can find what you want. You'll also find links to our sponsors where you can get great products and support the podcast. Also, our book, Pod Life, Podcasting Stories. It's a great book. Check it out. It's nice to hear where people come from and why they do what they do.